Okay. Good afternoon, Coach Elena. Hello. How are you doing today? Very good, thank you. It's nice and sunny here in New Zealand. <laughs> sure, it's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, thanks for inv inviting me. It's awesome being here. Of course, my pleasure. Okay, you are a really inspiring coach and your content on Instagram is really inspiring and full of positivity for language learners and inspiring for travelers as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you have a connection with languages that goes um, way back when you were a little child. So I want to hear your story. My language story? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I grew up in Ukraine, so I'm originally from Ukraine, and at the age 14, I moved to Italy with my mom. So this was exactly when um, I finished the middle school, the middle year school in Ukraine, and I started high school in Italy. Yes. Okay, so... Being from uh, Ukraine, uh, the language of Ukraine is Russian or? It's Ukrainian. The official language is Ukrainian. It's similar to Russian. They both have the same root. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then they developed in different ways. Uh, they are similar though. The official language of Ukraine is Ukrainian. Um, but where I'm from, I'm from the south. We do speak um, Russian in the family and with friends, but of course, uh, the TV, the schools, um, and all the rest is in Ukrainian, because, yep, that's the official language. Right. What is Ukraine yep. like? Ukraine? <laughs> well, I feel like we need another, um, pod another um, podcast um, for this topic. <laughs> Long story short, um, Ukraine is a great country. It's been mm -hmm. through a lot, and yeah. so, you know, I always like to say that ah, when you deal with a different nationality, don't judge them on what you see, but see, have a look first and what they have been through before that, okay? Because there is this stereotype of Eastern Europe, Russia, Ukraine, and um, other countries, that people... Um, cold and not friendly and you know not ne never smiling and all the things i mean it's kind of true yes uh but you know they've been through a lot of stuff <laughs> ukrainian um people so i mean it does make sense that they are like this but i mean in general it's a great country and it's got beautiful landscapes and food and yeah, forests and the sea, and yeah, it's incredible. Sure, that's a very important point. It is important to consider where they come from and not just judge them. Yes, yeah. Uh, it's really cold, right? <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, it's like, I can't remember exactly what is this saying, but it's, um, you know, before you judge me, um, put my shoes on and walk my my path or something. So this is to say, you know, it's a general, you know, philosophical <laughs> topic a little bit, you know, before you judge anyone, a country or a person or something, just you don't know what they have been through. You don't know what made them uh, like this, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the environmental cold, you know, like the ice and snow everywhere, like, like Not unbearable. Really. Okay. No, I mean, not really. It, it depends. Of course, the more, <laughs> um, the northern you are, the colder it gets, of course. I'm from the south, so it's got, yeah, it's a classical European um, climate, so it's pretty hot in summer, so people go and have a swim in the, in the, um, in the water and in the rivers and things, and it's kind of cold in winter. It's, yeah, it can it, it it can snow as well, but it's pretty mild to be honest. It's not extremely cold, not like Russia. Nope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not like Russia. That's nice. Okay. Uh, what was it like to move from Ukraine to Italy? 
Mm -hmm. It was a great life experience. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was great. Um, I didn't know Italian. Uh, I didn't know Italian. The only words I knew were, hello, my name is Elena, and um, here I am, <laughs> basically. Um, okay. And of course, yeah, yeah. It wasn't easy because, you know, the language, yeah, I didn't know the language. I was not familiar with the environment, the culture, the um, traditions, the mentality of Italy. And so that um, that's why it was a little bit more challenging. And of course, the age as well, you know, teenagers all, are, all around the world are particularly fragile and insecure, right? Because you're going through this important phase of your life um sure. yeah so it was a pretty challenging um year the first one yeah but um yeah it was good overall yeah it was a great experience yeah uh did anyone from your family uh speak italian or how were you communicating with people in the initial days in italy yeah that's a that's an amazing question yes yeah, so um my mom and i we stayed with some friends um and yeah they were ukrainian friends so we did speak um i mean i speak russian because yeah we're from the south and um but yeah both languages are um, my mother tongue so yeah we were speaking russian yeah didn't really have much contact with italian people by then no so yeah i was just taking it easy just oh yeah whatever you know <laughs> that will do <laughs> No, right. so yeah, yeah. I mean, I I started having a look at the dictionary, you know, and the vocabulary and things, but it's not the same thing as when you have to learn and because you have no choice, you know. I was kind of on a, on a holiday, yeah, because I, I arrived like in the beginning of August, and mm -hmm. school started in September, so I was just chilling and being on a holiday uh, for the entire month. Yeah. yeah. It must have been difficult for you, I'm guessing, like everything is Ita in Italian, completely new school, you cannot talk with anyone. And, you know, as yeah. you said, we're going through a fragile straight, a state when we are a teenager. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That made it particularly hard, you know, and yeah, you know, not having friends, right? Um, yeah. Having to study a lot, um, not really sure in the school environment, you know, you're not really sure what's normal, what's not normal. Like even right. when it was the, like physical education um, hour, you know, like you don't know if you are supposed to come with your um, sportswear or on you already, or if you take it with you and then you can change, you know, little things like that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, oh, not really sure. What is, you know, what if I do this? Will I be seen as a weirdo or something, you know? Sure, um, sure. Yeah, everything is new yeah. for you, of course. It is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and we don't even have any friends there at a new place, you know, someone can't relate to us. <laughs> no one. So, how did you manage to okay. um, learn? You had to learn Italian then, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have the choice. I mean, yeah, I, uh, at some point I remember um, <laughs> I was, um, sitting on the bed with my maths book open in front of me and uh, Russian Italian dictionary next to it because uh, I had to translate literally every single word of everything because otherwise I just wasn't I just, I just didn't know what to do um, yeah and in that moment I just remember I thought okay so this is getting very tough now and I feel like I'm about to quit because it's really hard and I was feeling discouraged and frustrated and didn't see any results, you know, in a few months. I mean, I was expecting huge results in, to a, in only a few months, you know. Um, and yeah, and I thought, okay, I can go and um, do some simple jobs for the rest of my life, like waiting in the restaurants, um, or I can keep studying okay and keep learning the language and it can't be this hard forever and anyway you know it will get better at some point <laughs> right. yeah so yeah 
So I went for the second option, of course. <laughs> and that's a great option that you went for. Uh, so initially, when you had to learn Italian, you didn't like learning it, right? No, I, I, I liked it, to be honest. I, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I think I've always had this passion for languages, to mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I considered studying languages as a hobby for my entire life, to be honest. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't see it like, oh, you know, how boring I have to learn this language. No, I was curious about it. And for sure, that's one of the reasons why I um, learned it this uh, this quickly. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't say I, yeah, I, I feel like I felt like I had to, but I was enjoying it. But it was a lot, you know, sure. because it was Italian, learning Italian and keeping up with the school and homework and communicating and trying to get involved to understand the environment and the society, culture and things. So yeah. there was a lot on my plate by then. Yeah. Yeah, and everything is in Italian. And when you don't know the language at all, you literally have to translate every single word, yes. right? To understand and you cannot yeah, articulate exactly. yet. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, did anyone help you with study or what did you do to learn the language then? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I, um, the first year, that first year, I was attending four different courses of Italian. So four courses during one year. So it was like one course from the school, one course from something else, one course, something else. And um, there was a lady, she was a retired teacher as well. And she used yeah. to help me a lot with my homework. And she was so patient and I'm so, so grateful um, when I think about her. Um, and, you know, I would just, you know, pop into her house and she would just help me with the homework. And she didn't speak any word of any other language. So, like, literally, history book, okay? Okay, so I need to understand what's, like, what's written on these two pages, right? And somehow she managed to explain it to me with simple words. And I was like, oh, okay, I think I understand it now. <laughs> um, so for sure it was her. And then I became friends with um, someone in my class. So there was this girl, she approached me, like, after a few days I was in school. And she was from South America, from Ecuador. Uh, and she, I can't remember how we communicated because I didn't know Italian. And she didn't know Russian or Ukrainian or English. But for some reason, we, we have somehow managed to understand each other. And she would um, help me as well. She would help. Yeah, she would just come at, uh, come home or I would go and see her. Um, and we actually became friends. And we are still, still super good friends with her. And so with her, like afterwards, I, um, <laughs> I learned Spanish with her as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so, and at the time you didn't know English either, right? I, I knew some, I mean, I always loved English. English is my favorite foreign language. Um, but in Ukraine, it was a pretty superficial learning. You know, it was like basics and pretty old, old style English from textbooks. Like, like yeah. It, it wasn't the real English that we hear now and that we speak now. It was like really old. <laughs> yeah. Right, the old English yeah. from the books or something like that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it, it, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, was the, how was your journey of uh, learning Italian with four classes? Um, it was fast, of course, it was a... Uh, um, very fast. Um, actually, to be honest, in a few months, like within three months, I could already have a conversation, like a pretty good conversation. My Italian on a conversational level was pretty good already. Okay. Within three months. Yeah. And I could understand um, what the teacher was saying and I could read better. And yeah. Yeah, after three months, I was already feeling a lot better. But, mm. you know, 
learning a language is a never-ending process. It's a lifelong process. <laughs> um, really? Yes. I mean, yeah. Uh, so three months were enough to speak Italian good on a conversational level, but to keep up with the school, you know, I had to improve and improve and improve and learn better and better. Right, sure. Well, I agree with you. Like, uh, no matter how much you learn, you can always get better. You can always learn more. Sure. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so you learn Italian and how did it go for you after that? Yeah, so the second year, I had to choose um, what I wanted to study in high school. Mm. And I, I decided I wanted to study languages, of course. <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, as soon as I got better in Italian, I didn't want my life to be too easy. So, of course, I went for languages. <laughs> and so I um, studied English, French and German from the second year high school. For the next four years all of them together yes yeah my brain literally my brain was like what are you doing to me why this <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah after a few months somehow my brain managed to um you know to create i don't know to create some different shelves in my brain okay here is the french here's german here's spanish here's english here's italian and somehow to sort them in right places yeah but in the beginning it was very confusing like really really confusing mm. i can completely understand uh it's really stressful in the beginning it's it's stressful for people to learn one language at a time you did three <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but as i told you you know it wasn't i mean years in the in the mm, first few months it was harder but you know, studying languages has always been a passion for me. And I even like when I was in at the fourth year um, high school, I even started to learn Portuguese. I just printed um, printed out some self self learn Portuguese course, and I was just learning because you know I was like, oh, Portuguese, that sounds cool. You know, and, yeah, yeah, and I would just do it because you know it was just fun. <laughs> Sure, sure. Uh, it's a different thing when you're learning it as a passion and it's a different thing to look at it as a daunting task. Oh, I have to learn all of this. This is so stressful. I don't think I can do it. For sure. Like, yeah. Right. So yeah. you learn all them three. What's that? Uh, Say it again. Yeah. Did you learn all of them? Three of them? German, French and yeah. 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 English. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, if, of course um eventually you you don't speak all the languages at the same level and especially now you know it was different in school and it was different when i had my previous job um because i could speak like yeah six at least six languages <laughs> on a daily basis it's a bit different if you don't practice them but yeah i was yeah right yeah, you was have to be practicing yeah and yeah. how long did it take for you to learn these uh, to learn all of them? Yeah. It's a never ending process. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, until, until you became confident, at least you can speak. How long does that take? Well, it's so, yeah, it, I think it's a bit different when you um, learn anything in school. And then, I mean, in this case, we're talking about languages. It's different when you learn them in school and then you um, have to speak this language like in the real time, in the real life, right? It's like right. completely different. And I was super lucky with my high school. We've done some really cool stuff. And we had um, like a um, student exchange every year. So like one year we would go to France for um, one week, okay? And that was the great way to immerse yourself and un really start understanding the real language not from your teacher and your classmates and the textbook but from real um french speakers right and then we did the same with germany and then we did the same with uk um so that was 
like it, it one week it wasn't a lot of time of course but in that week i remember i would just absorb so much you know like a sponge i would just absorb and then um i would just speak so much better afterwards sure sure yeah yeah i do believe that like this is the I believe this is the best way to learn any language, to immerse yourself in the people that speak the language. It's not so effective or realistic, let's say, to learn it from a teacher for, or from a book. It's doable, you know, it's doable, but people need to keep in mind that as, <laughs> as soon as they will find themselves in, the, <laughs> in that environment, it, will, it might be a little bit challenging to get used to, to the real language, you know, because it's different if you're used only to one accent, you know, and then you hear many accents and you're like, oh, my God, what is this? So, I mean, but now it's different. We've got all these uh, resources on YouTube and, you know, you can get um, connected with whoever really in the world. So now actually it's easier. Sure. It's easier than before because of the Internet. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think um, it's also a little uncomfortable for um, people to immerse themselves in the speakers in the beginning, I guess, because they're scared. Yes. I might not oh. be able to, you know. This is my favorite topic. Yes. Mm. Yeah, this is like this is number one, <laughs> the greatest fear of people who are uh, learning a language, the fear of speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk it's about that. Oh my god. Yes, it's it's huge, you know, and it's so fascinating to understand why why is that? You know, cuz like from the brain perspective, our brain wants to keep us safe. Okay? Right. From the evolution point of view, um the brain wants to keep us safe and to save energy. <laughs> okay? This is I mean, but this yeah. is a bit different. To save us energy, it's when we feel we are procrastinating on things. Um, mm -hmm. So the brain wants to protect us because, you know, um, speaking another language feels threatening, okay? Right. Because if you don't speak in a correct way, you might think that these people will refuse you, mm -hmm. okay? And on um, as a human beings, we are social beings, okay? And sure. if you look, from the evolution point of view, we have survived thanks to um, social connections, okay? And so in our brain, our old part of the brain um, is still taking over our rational part of the brain. Um, and when it comes to speaking, this old part of the brain will always take over because it wants to keep us safe, okay? So on an um, irrational level, we don't want to speak because we don't want to be refused. Okay. Mm. Although on the rational level, we do understand, you know, oh, come on, you know, even if I say something wrong, they won't kill me or they won't, you know, um, say, okay, how dare you make mistakes? Go, go away. You know, we don't want to talk to you. It won't happen. But no. these are our biggest fears on, on a subconscious level, as I said. You know? Wow. Yeah. So interesting. I love it. Yeah, this is fascinating. Yeah. Very, very, also very, very helpful for learners. So this is basically your survival mechanism. Your brain is trying to protect you. Yep. Yes. How do you help people to overcome this? Yep. Ah, uh, this is an amazing question. Um. So. So am I um a certified NLP? practitioner NLP is neuro language um, neuro linguistic programming okay. so this is a great system to rewire your brain with some specific techniques techniques and this is not really a branch of psychology but yeah kind of uh, NLP is um, made of efficient techniques from taken from psychotherapy mainly um, Anyway, so these are quick techniques that help people to um, change their beliefs or the way they see things in, um, in a pretty quick way. Um, 
So how how people how do people overcome the fear of speaking? Um, if 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 they don't have access to um, NLP techniques, so if we're talking about self help, the the easiest answer is practice anyway. Mm. Okay, because the more you do something, the less you get scared about it. It's counterintuitive, but this is um, the best way to do it. Um, and wait, I, I lost it. I had something else I wanted to say. Um, yeah, anyway, it will come to me. Sure. Totally. Yeah. I completely agree with you. It's, um, you know, it, it, if something makes you uncomfortable, then you need to attack it, not run away from it. Yes. Yeah. And it's also about the habit itself. You know, if you if you say um, no to speaking all the time, you will ac accumulate this um, this no experience. Right, okay? right, right. But if you say yes, and if you go through the uncomfortable, you will create a new habit. Okay, and it will get less and less scary. Sure, completely agreed. Like if you keep saying no. Like you said, it's going to accumulate and it's yeah. going to become more difficult every time yes. you say no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So there is an amazing um, TED, TED talk on YouTube. I can't remember the name um, of this guy. So the idea was that <laughs> he, um, he decided to uh, run this experiment for himself. Um, so because he was very scared of hearing a no from someone mm. okay and he was in sales so he was selling stuff and he was very uncomfortable hearing a no okay for okay. anything and so he decided okay you know what i will face this fear and so he um decided he will get at least 100 no's from people okay and wow. see how he feels afterwards and that's what he did you know and uh, he said, like, after the 20th, no, he didn't care already. Mm. You know, he's like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. So same here, same with speaking. And also another um, thing that can help as a self-help um, is, you know, what is um, the, the worst thing that can happen? Okay, if you, okay, you're scared of uh, making mistakes, you're afraid of speaking. Okay, what's the worst Thing that can happen imagine that you speak okay you do make a mistake what's the worst thing that will happen right and you can say i don't know people will say how dare you make making mistakes or something or they will laugh at me and things mm. so once you think of the worst case scenario you will just realize that it's improbable you know it, it won't happen it's just your irrational fear Mm -hmm. yeah. And so this will also help you to um, take this pressure off, you know? Sure. Yep. That's very helpful. Uh, you know, confront your fears and uh, you have to face it, right? And you have to uh, think about the worst case scenario. And people actually don't care about your mistakes, I guess, in real life, do they? No, like they actually assist you when you try to speak their language. Yes, and even and even if someone does laugh at you or something, you know, just accept it. You know, there are many people out there in the world. Not everyone um, is, I don't know, compassionate and mm -hmm. can understand what you're going through as well. You know, one of the um, what I really like is um, what is the oh what was it what is the what what does um, a foreign ac what does the foreign accent mean it means like a, it's a sign of bravery okay so if someone has a foreign accent in any language it's a sign of bravery okay this is how they are courageous to speak another language. Okay, so I like to, yeah, to say it to everyone, you know, to all the students, um, 
see it this way. You know, you are brave that you're putting yourself out there. And even if there's going to be someone who's going to laugh at you, I mean, it won't happen. But even if it will, just remind yourself that you are doing your part. Okay. And probably the other person just doesn't understand the effort, what you're going through and things. And that's okay. We're all different. You know, that's fine. For sure. This is really valuable. Um, yeah. You, you're, you're unique, right? And you're, you're, this is a bravery. Uh, these are perfect words. This is why we need more teachers like you that are really compassionate yeah. and helpful. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Yes. Thank Did you, you have this fear as well? Say it again. Did you have this fear as well? Um, I can't really remember, but yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Um, I, I recall when I was in Germany. So, yeah, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to brush up on my German. So I went to Germany, signed up, uh, signed up for a course and I was going, it felt like going back to school. You know, you had to be there by eight and the course would start at eight, ten or something. And then you would finish at, I don't know, half past one. And it was great. Um, yeah, and and yeah, I remember I wanted to speak German even outside this, even when I was outside the school, so on the bus, in the shop, and things. But I lost the habit of speaking German by then, and um, yeah, I just remember I I was in this bakery and I wanted to get something, and I I don't know if I didn't say it, uh, I didn't say it loud enough or something, and the lady was like, huh, what? in that moment I just wanted to run away I was like oh my god this is so embarrassing oh my god and then I was like okay take a deep breath and say it again <laughs> and then I just repeated it and she's like oh yeah yeah sure blah, blah. and and that was fine you know so just keep going keep trying you know if people don't understand you just say it again or find another word you know yeah. Sure, sure. And um, in real life, nobody is going to snap at you like your teacher if you make a mistake. <laughs> exactly. That's the point. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing that you keep saying is habit of speaking language. So I wasn't, um, I lost the habit of speaking language. What do you mean by that? How does that affect your speaking? It's, um... You know, with languages, ah, it's a habit that you need to keep practicing. Because if you don't, you lose it a little bit. You know, like if I had to speak German right now with someone, for sure my passive knowledge would be a lot better than my active knowledge. So passive knowledge is when you understand, but an active knowledge is when you can speak, okay, or write. Right. And... I would probably understand a lot, but to speak German, it would have taken me more time, you know, because I would be like, okay, so where is my German compartment? <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> right, right, but, right. Um, yeah, this is something that, that would come back to me in, in the few days, especially if I'm, I don't know, in Germany or with German speakers. That's very interesting. Like, yeah. uh, it's not like, oh, I did a course of a language for one year and now I can speak for a lifetime. I don't need to practice. No, this is a journey. No, it's you not. Have to, yes. Right, you have to keep practicing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like going to the gym or, you know, doing professional sports. You know, it's a muscle you're training. Okay, as soon as you stop, your muscle still remembers because your body do, does have a memory, okay? So your muscles still remember how it looked, okay? But your body starts to um, change the shape again if you don't practice all the time, if you don't do sports, okay? But as soon as you want to resume it, right, you will get to, to the same level quicker. Sure. Does it make sense? Sure, 100%. Yeah. Like, um, 
if I don't need your brain says I don't need this anymore. So okay, let's just keep it for now, right? And yep. when you need it, you need to try to practice it. it. Just takes a little bit of time, and then you're back like that. Yes. Yep. 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 Um, is this coming from NLP? Did you learn it there? Um, mm, you mean this this um, analogy? Right. This yeah. knowledge of language. How did you learn this? No. Um, I don't know. It's <laughs> part of me. <laughs> right. Sure. You experienced I it. Just, yeah, I just love analogies. And analogies are a great in metaphors. This is, these analogies and metaphors, these two come from NLP. And um, I was already okay. pretty good at them. But um, since I've, um, I've got my certification, I use them even more, especially on my lessons, on my coaching uh, sessions, lessons. Because, yeah, metaphors and analogies work so well when you need to reframe something, when you need to create a new belief or change a perception of something, and especially to understand how some processes work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you having classes with students right now where you help them with language? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got students from literally all over the world, like literally, <laughs> and it's amazing. I just love it. North America, you know, and one thing that cracks me up is um, <laughs> that uh, especially people from Europe, um, I mean, actually, anywhere, any, yeah, anyone, but Europe and North America, especially, you know, um, when I'm on a call with them, I'm like, hello from the future, you know, because here it's Sunday. You know, now it's, I don't know, 5 p.m. Sunday. And in um, in the U.S., it's Saturday. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, hey, from the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah. How do they react? No, it's, yeah, we just have a good laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. great. Sure. Uh, so when these uh, people from um, South America or Europe are learning, uh, what language? Um, normally, do they come to you for English? So I'm teaching, I'm working with people who are learning Italian, Russian, and English. Okay. Yep. Yep. And what's funny as well is that I've got quite a few students who speak several languages themselves. And <laughs> with me, they are like practicing several languages as well. Like I've got these... Um, uh, you know, uh, guys from Canada. So, so listen to this. So basically, they they've got Italian um, parents, but they were born and they grew up in Canada, and so they speak um, French because they are from the French part of Canada. They speak French and English, of course, and Italian. Okay, because their parents speak Italian and they are learning Russian with me, right? So <laughs> on our lessons, we speak Italian and I'm teaching them Russian in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, from two, two guys from Canada. Yeah, and I've got yeah, some other examples like that. So yeah, this is funny. Wow. And it's also, um, you have started working online recently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. A little bit more than one year ago. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do before that? Did you have a classroom? No, no. Actually, I, yes, I did study languages in high school and uni. Uh, but then I ended up working in hospitality for, for quite a few years back in Italy. Yeah. Like um, in hotels. Yeah. Worked in pretty big um, resorts with like 642 rooms. And so that was a great place to practice all the languages. So that was a great place to speak, you know, at least five, six languages on a daily basis. That was the part of it. That was the part that I liked the most <laughs> of that job. Yeah. Sure. Uh, why did you go for hospitality? Uh, was the motive behind going for it languages? I'll get to um, interact with people from different parts of the world and I get to practice the languages. Was yes. It I, yeah, it was the second one. I've, I've always been super passionate about other cultures and how 
other people behave and how they think and what's normal, what's not normal, how, you know, how's their mentality. And um, yeah, for sure, that was the biggest part of it. That's why I started traveling. <laughs> okay, we'll definitely talk more on that. But for now, what did you get out of observing people from different parts of the world? I don't know that. Yeah, you mean um, travel-wise or from teaching languages? From When you're working at this job, you know. Uh, oh, where, yeah. Like I share the same interest, you know, like you, like looking into people from different parts and their cultures and knowing people. So what did you learn from these humans? Like, do they have anything in common or are we all same or are we different? You know, like what? Mm -hmm. like, um, I mean, of course, we are all different, you know, and that's why yeah. the world is beautiful. In Italian, we say the world is, um, what is it? Yeah, the world is beautiful because we are all different. Um, and I, I think the biggest insight was that, yes, we are different, you know, and if everyone is a little bit more understanding and more curious about other cultures, mm. we can live in such a better world, <laughs> you know? So really? if everyone was a little bit more curious about other cultures, you know, and more, less judgmental, more curious and more respectful as well. Because, you know, I mean, it's normal to feel a little bit threatened when um, we come across different culture because we don't know that culture, right? Mm -hmm. But if we are curious about it and we want to learn more about it, we will understand why these people behave like this and what's normal for them, what's not normal, mm. you know? For example, in my previous job, I just realized for myself that when I was working with Germans, you know, they wanted the things explained in a certain way. And I got it, and I was giving them what they wanted, okay? Mm. With, I don't know, Spanish people, I realized they were more like Italians. So they wanted to talk more and have more as of a small talk and be more, you know, cheerful and things, you know. And yeah. um, I don't know, someone else wanted things in a different way, you know. So it wasn't, yeah, it was really about getting on their same, same level, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Right. And they laughed, you know, because they felt respected, understood. And yeah. Right, so you have to keep an open mind for the change and accept yeah. the changes. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are Germans a little bit direct, you know, as they say? Oh, I like love direct. it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. And Dutch people are too. And apparently it's a common thing for um, Northern Europe, you know, to mm. be direct. And I've got a very good friend of mine who's Dutch. And I mean, Germans, of, of course, as well. And uh, we had a conversation around this with him um, some time ago. And I was like, you know, because like, well, what's the thing behind it? Like, why, why your culture thinks that being direct is good? OK, because, for example, here in New Zealand, it's the opposite. Kiwis are extremely polite. Mm. OK, they are extremely polite. And when I speak English here, I need to remember I always need to remember, you know, to be polite enough when I'm asking for things, when I'm saying something, you know, because otherwise they would just be like, oh, that person is rude, mm -hmm. you know, but not because they are good and Germans are bad. They are just doing things in a different way. You know, Germans and Dutch people do value being direct. Okay, so right. if you're saying, if you're saying, oh, excuse me, wouldn't you mind please giving me this if you don't mind, blah, blah, blah. They would be just like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I, I thought they're polite, uh, you know, very polite. They are polite, yes. But they will tell you if there is something they don't like. Mm, to your face, okay. <laughs> yeah. They okay. will be pretty honest, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. It's not that bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, speaking of New Zealand, uh, do they speak English in New Zealand? Yes. Yep. Yep. Really? I thought they have their own language and not many people speak English there. So, yeah, the, um, they still do have um, Maori people. So they are native people from New Zealand. I mean, they migrated from other islands as well. Um, but yeah, when English um, people arrived here, the settlers, when uh, the first settlers arrived in New Zealand, they found Maori people, and the, the, um, there's they, there's still a lot of them here in New Zealand, and um, so yeah, some people do speak te, te reo Maori, but yeah, the official language is um, English. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, we need to transition quickly because you don't have much time to next topic. Okay, let's talk about um, your why your why when it comes to languages and how did you start teaching languages? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to be honest, <laughs> if someone told me three years ago that I would be teaching languages, I would be like, me? <laughs> teaching? No. Um, so it's interesting how uh, life changes, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I... I was curious about it and you know it was just a few months after I arrived in New Zealand and I was like I feel like I would like to give it a go and see how I feel you know if I like it if I don't like it I don't know I'll just try you know and I just loved it I loved it it was amazing you know seeing um, the results people get and you know seeing people who don't feel comfortable when speaking, you know, and then after a few months having a conversation with them in their target language, it's just priceless. It's just incredible, you know? I, and get, this, I get that feeling, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you know, when you meet them for the first time, they cannot really speak. They're not really comfortable speaking, but you give them the tools that are necessary to work on their language and then they work on it and after a few days they're a completely different person and they're telling you this happened because of you thank you like that's the best feeling yeah yes and also i um what i recently started doing with language coaching is um i just realized that in the world there are so many people who hold themselves back from more opportunities in life, okay? Because let's say they don't learn English because they have lots of limiting beliefs. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm this, I'm that. And they just deprive themselves from better life opportunities. Let's say really? they want to, um, can you hear me? Now I can. Would you please repeat oh. the last one? The yes. voice was gone for a second. Okay. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I just realized that many people um, hold, this, hold themselves back from better life opportunities because they have many limiting beliefs. Like, I'm not good at languages. I'm too old. I'm too young. <laughs> I'm something. You know, and they just live the life they don't want to. You know, mm. but they have, I don't know, their desire is to move to another country, for example, or get a better job, which involves, for example, English, right, or another language. But they just don't do it because they don't think they're good enough or they will be successful or something else. And so I really want to spread the knowledge, you know, of how everyone can learn a language, how everyone can speak confidently and how to get the results they, wa they want. That's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so this is my why. <laughs> wow. So that's a great why. And um, it's really helpful for people, what you're doing. You know, it gives me a completely new perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, people Thank are you. holding themselves back. Yeah. Yeah. OK. How did you get started traveling? 
Um, so I I don't know. I uh, like same almost the same thing as with languages. I've always been drawn to you know discovering the world and the people and how other people live and how other people communicate and what is their mentality and things. Um, but you know classic <laughs> I went to high school and then uni and then I started working and I just didn't travel by then um, but then I, at some point I decided to change everything so I quit my job I just I was like okay I've got some savings so I'll just travel the world a little bit and I traveled quite a lot in Europe uh, UK and Ireland and Germany and Austria and other countries um, and then I um, arrived to New Zealand actually just in time <laughs> I got I got here at the end of February and yeah like after three weeks lockdown <laughs> but yeah great timing we we're talking about your traveling in Europe please continue mm -hmm. yeah I um, yeah so I traveled for a few years in Europe and yeah and then I arrived in New Zealand just before lockdown <laughs> and it's yeah. been great New Zealand is an amazing country it's really the mm -hmm. best country in the world for many different reasons but especially it was super safe in lockdown and after lockdown and yeah I'm just so happy I'm still here yeah um, yep. New, Z New Zealand is also beautiful right it's stunning really I before I arrived here I read somewhere that um, someone said that if you don't have time to travel around the world but you want to see the most beautiful places from mm. the world come to New Zealand <laughs> because New Zealand has got everything there are fjords and rivers and lakes and mountains and ski and um, ocean and volcanoes and thermal um what do you call it um like hot poles natural hot poles and like literally everything it's that's it i'm going like... to new zealand for sure <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. you have this dream um when you were little like i want to travel yeah 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 okay yeah, yeah. I I remember chance. yeah when i was um already in kind of the processing the thing that I wanted to quit my job and wanted to travel. I was helping my mom to move. She was moving the house in another house. And somewhere in the basement, I found my old um, like vision board, you know, like the one yeah. with pictures and things. And I made that vision board when I was, I don't know, like 16. And mm. It was like huge in the middle. It was like, I want to travel around the world. And I was yeah. like, wow. And I had like goosebumps. And I was like, oh my God. And I haven't yeah. done it yet. And I said to myself, okay, now is the moment. Amazing. You are a real example of someone who has a dream and that actually made it come true. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah, thank you. it also tells me that it's possible. I'm going to yes. travel too. Yes, yeah. It, you know, it's, um, it is about vision boards and it is about having dreams, but it's also about working for them. You know, you can't just um, sit and wait until someone knocks in your door and say, Here, here's your dream <laughs> out, of, right. out of nowhere, you know. Yeah, people tend to forget the work part, right? Mm. yep okay um you have also been to a lot of amazing places you know in nature and i go through your instagram profile it's like a dream <laughs> you're exploring yeah. yeah the entire country is like a dream yeah um yes yeah um what is uh typical for a new zealander well what do you, what do you mean like a typical uh, you know, we say typical German or typical Indian is chai and someone who loves cricket. So what is um, someone who is in New Zealand like? Yeah. Um, so typical um, Kiwi. So 
they are pretty laid back, so they take life easy, mm. you know, which is great. Um, and I'm not saying this in a negative way, but in a good way. Um, lots of them love rugby, of course, because uh, New Zealand All Blacks is, is famous, right, all over the world, yeah. uh, rugby. And um, beer and barbecue, they, they say Barbie. <laughs> right. Uh, barbecue and, um, and they are really, they're like so friendly. Everyone is so friendly and so open and so keen to help others. And yeah, just, yeah, it feels like being in a village where everyone knows everyone else. I mean, of course, you don't know everyone, right? But this feeling of, you know, if I need help, I can literally ask anyone and they will help me. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this is the feeling that I have. Yeah. This is very interesting. Yeah. Um, I didn't know much about New Zealand, you know, because it, I don't know why. It does, you, just, you just don't see much on internet. Yes, because it's, it's on the other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, it's such a small country with um and it's given so much by nature. Yes. Yeah. And it's a super new country as well. Mm -hmm. It was the last country, I think. I think it was the last country um that was um discovered in the world, you know. So it's a new country. Right. As well. Yeah. And it's a new country. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll share this as well. Um when I um, go to museums here, I'm always super fascinated by settlers' um, a section. So first, like early settlers in New Zealand. And these people were from England and Scotland and Wales, you know, and Ireland. And the amount of work they had to do to build up a new country, right? And of course, they were also traveling from the other side of the world and it was different as it is now. So they didn't have internet. There was um, no security of getting anywhere. You know, you would just um, go on the ship and hope you uh, the ship will get you safe <laughs> to a new country that you didn't know anything about it. Uh, yeah, it, was, it took them like three, four months to come here. And the people have had to build the country, open businesses, make it work, you know, and start everything from scratch. And this amazes me because, you know, you have to be willing to do it so much, you know, and you, yeah. you just you just had to make it work. And here in New Zealand, they have um, they they say it Kiwi ingenuity or what is it? The number eight. Uh, number eight wire mentality. So this means that you make it work with what you've got, with, with, uh, you make it work with the resources that you have got. Mm. Okay, so the eight, number eight wire, they explained me that it's a super use, you know, useful wire, like the most common one that you would use for everything, you know? And so they have this mentality of making the things work with what you've got. And it's just mind blowing to me. Sure, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think uh, if you keep expecting the ideal or the perfect, then it's gonna stop you. But it's about making it work with what you have. Exactly. Sure. This can also relate to language learners when they uh, stop, uh, when they hold themselves back from speaking. You know, because they want to be perfect, but perfection does not exist okay you just start from what you've got <laughs> eight, number yeah. eight via mentality <laughs> in language learning yeah yeah um i think even native speakers um sometimes make mistakes unconsciously Everybody. yes right yeah yeah totally okay so don't expect perfection just try to communicate yes exactly exactly okay I forgot to talk about Italy. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. what what is Italy like? Oh, Italy is amazing. It's a beautiful country. It's very historical, right? Yeah, it's got so much history and traditions, and 
it's yeah it's an amazing country like and when people ask me do you feel more ukrainian or italian <laughs> i say i don't know like 50 50 depending on the situation <laughs> and how i'm feeling <laughs> but i mean i i don't like um labels in this case i like to define myself global citizen because that's um, perfect I like to feel home wherever I am, you know, I don't like to think, oh, my home is there, because this prevents you from experiencing amazing things from where, where you are, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, so Italy is great. Italians are just, yeah, I just love Italy. Yeah, the food and oh, the, the climate and all the things, yeah, it's amazing. And art, Italy, like, mm ballet and music and museums and all the things it's just yeah unique it's really, it's really unique. amazing yeah um yeah. it's a small country but uh, i only knew italy for supercars mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you, know, you mean like ferrari and um maserati yeah. maserati yeah <laughs> yeah yes yeah they also sound cool i also like their language yes yeah yeah okay yeah, before we wrap this up, um, tell people what your message is for language learners. Yeah. Um, the biggest piece of advice is don't expect perfect situations, okay? They will not come, okay? Start acting, start taking action with what you've got, okay? It's easy to stop yourself and think oh i need to you know buy another book or i need to take another course before i start speaking actually but no just start from where you are right now okay find someone and talk start speaking to someone because i'm i'm referring to the problem of speaking because this is the most common fear of language learners but of course depending on um what they struggle with um, they can reach out and text me on Instagram or something. Uh, but I also, depending on what my students' needs are, I um, adapt my Instagram content around it and I give some pieces of advice there as well. But yeah, if we talk about the fear of speaking, the biggest piece of advice is make mistakes <laughs> and start from where you are now. Don't, don't wait for perfect conditions because they will never arrive. You know, you, you create them by trying. That's awesome, really. Yeah, okay. thank you. You also, also mm -hmm. tell um, where they can find you on Instagram. Yes. I think you just said that, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, so, yeah, on Instagram, it's Ele, it's E-L-E -E, um, slash the, the, the below one, the little one, uh, mentor, Elementor. Um, Instagram, yeah, on my Instagram, uh, they all can also find my email. And yeah, I'm more active on Instagram rather than on Facebook. Yeah, or emails as well. Yeah, that's okay. They will find uh, the link to all of that in the description. So no worries. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Elena, you're really an awesome coach. There's so much to learn from you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> it was yes. really great having you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Shreem. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It was great chatting with you. Um, yeah, and hopefully more people will start learning languages today if they need to or if they want to, because everyone can do it, literally everyone. Well, I'm sure after listening to your advice, they will. This is really helpful. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Awesome. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>